Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to Three Crosses Church. My name is Christy Hale, and one way that I've been called to serve here at the church is through a ministry called Laundry Love, and it is a, a nonprofit organization um, that provides a free laundry service for people in the community. As of right now, we are serving at uh, the Harden uh, laundry mat, and I was trying to think of the name of it. <laughs> but anyway, we're at the one there in Harden, and we're there from 5 to 7 the first uh, Thursday of each month. I would love to see this ministry grow. Um, right now, we have provided snacks um, the two months that we have been there, um, but if somebody would like to provide snacks, you know, or even a small meal for the people that come, um, that would be one way that this ministry could continue to grow. Another way is, of course, there are other laundromats in our community, and I would love to have other teams. Um, right now, there are three or four of us that show up at the Harden one, and so if there are more people that would be interested in serving and starting another um, ministry at the laundromat in Benton, um, that's another option as well. So after uh, service, I'll be in Gantt Hall um, here in the fellowship area. And if you would be interested um, in either bringing snacks or a meal or serving on an additional team and expanding this ministry to other laundromats, I would be happy to talk to you. Um, I would also love to get a list of people who maybe do not want to serve on a monthly basis, but maybe would be interested in serving as a substitute in those times that one of us could not be there. Um, so if you would be interested in that as well, that would be another option. Um, so that's a lot to lay on all of you this morning. So I would like all of us to prepare our hearts to worship and to think about this uh, call to ministry that I've just put before you. So please bow your heads. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for this church and for bringing us all here today. It's great to see our youth back from camp, and I can't wait to hear their stories and, and how um, their love and their devotion has grown for you, Lord. And I pray that you'll uh, just be with this church and help us in uh, growing as well as people and as a congregation and in our ministry to the community. Um, I pray for Pastor Leah as she delivers the message and that all of us prepare our hearts and that your spirit is alive and moving within this congregation today, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. 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 Please stand and join us now as we sing Child of Love.
that's about the Holy Spirit. Can we sing that chorus one more time? And let this be your prayer. Not, it's not just a song, but we're about to hear about Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit came. And as we sing this song, it's your prayer that we, is, that it's the today. Today is three crosses Pentecost. We'll talk about what that means. But this isn't just a song because it's a great song. This is our prayer. So youth, sing it, church, sing it, children, especially mine, I know you know it. No pressure. But let this be our heart cry before we hear the scripture. Holy Spirit, you are together in one place suddenly a sound from heaven 
like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be in individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered together. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Thyria, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the region of Libya, bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own language. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated with our children come forward for children's time. Good morning. Are y'all loving summer already? Is it the greatest thing ever? I agree. I love summer too. Kind of. Well. Okay. So I've got a question. How many of y'all have been outside when it's been super, super windy? Oh, come on. It's never been windy at recess playing on the playground. It's never been recess walking in, or recess, goodness. Windy walking into Walmart. So what happened? What do you feel on a windy day? What all's going on if it's super windy? What's going on, Jackson? It feels like some kind of pressure is pushing you back. Ooh, it's kind of like a pressure, right? You can feel it all over your body. What else? What do you hear? What do you hear when it's windy? Leaves. You might hear the leaves, yeah. What else, Jenny? It might whistle. Ooh, it might whistle. What do you think, Molly? The leaves might blow. The leaves will blow. What else? Have you guys ever been near a flag when it's windy? Doesn't it make like a whipping sound, kind of? Yeah. You got something else? Um, uh, uh, it means that it's like a pressure, and then it, it's like wind, and then it, you feel the wind, and then it's really strong. Yeah, it's really strong. What do you see? You told me you see the leaves blowing. Does other stuff move when it's windy? Yeah, like what? A flag. Flags might move. Yep. Sticks might roll. Oh, that's a good one. I know if I wear a dress outside when it's windy, I have to hold it down so my dress doesn't blow up, right? That would be so silly. So, in our scripture today, they talked about how all these people were gathered in this house, and it got super windy inside the house. That's kind of weird, isn't it? No, it didn't blow the house down. Something even more awesome happened. If it got super windy in our house right now, it might blow the house down. You're right. But it got super windy. And then the disciples started talking in different languages. So they got filled with the Holy Spirit. The, and it, the Holy Spirit kind of is like wind, right? We can feel it in our hearts, right? We can see it working in our lives and in everybody else's life. And sometimes if we listen really, really careful, we can hear it. Okay? So next time it's super windy, I want you guys to remember that the Holy Spirit is like the wind. Okay? Okay, you guys want me to pray? Yeah. Okay. Dear God, thank you for the gift of these wonderful children. Um, and thank you for the way that the Holy Spirit works and moves in their lives and in all of ours. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What do you guys say? I almost forgot. And also with you.
So technically last week was Pentecost, but we're going to celebrate today. And in Pentecost, it's, a, it's our story. It's all of our stories. For a lot of times we talk about Pentecost being the birth of the church. But really and truly, Pentecost is more about what God is doing and how we respond to it. Because when we talk about the birth of the church, we do what humans are so good at doing, and we're making it about us. But what is Pentecost, I dare us to think about, what is God doing, and how are you and I supposed to respond to God? You know, for most of us now, when we, I ask you, well, what has God done for us? What are you going to say? What has God done for us? Okay. Um, all right. What else? What has God done? Okay. We're sending Christ. I was hoping it would be all shouts at once. All right. So we know that he sent Christ to die on the cross for our sins. He, we know that he resurrected Christ on the third day, that even death was defeated. When somebody asks you, what has God done for you? You probably say, he saved me. Right? Okay, so that is true, but there's a second part to that that we often don't talk about. So when I say, what's God done for you? He saved me, right? Oh, okay, I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> All right, he saved us. Part two of that is that he's empowered us. So he saved us, and he's empowered us. And I can't help it. i got to try. Okay, what has God done for us? He's saved us. Yes! All right, you can be quiet the rest of the service, I promise. That is the story of Pentecost, God empowering us. See, we, oftentimes what happens is we stop at the saving but God's empowered us. And they have to go together. You see, Pentecost, the Jesus had told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the time of the Holy Spirit would come up on them. And then they would be his witnesses throughout the entire world. And you've got to think about it. This is 12 people that Jesus is saying, by the way, we're going to be in witnessing throughout the entire world. Granted, their concept of the world was smaller than ours, but it was still huge. But Jesus' first instruction to them was to wait. How many of you like waiting? Right, I expect a silence on that one. <laughs> Waiting's hard, but... Sometimes that's God's command in our life, is to wait. To wait until His timing, to wait till His empowering, His equipping. And it's especially hard to wait in the world we live here in Benton, Kentucky, when you can say, hey Siri, or hey Google, what is yada, 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 yada? And get an answer. But God says, wait. Wait until I'm ready. And wait till I have equipped you. So they're together and they're waiting. But they're already in Jerusalem. And why are they in Jerusalem? Well, believe it or not, Pentecost is found in the Old Testament. In fact, Pentecost is usually related to the Old Testament and what it's called the Feast of Weeks. And that's where they would gather together and they would bring their first fruits and give thanks to God and offer them to God. It also later on became a time when they would get together and remember when God gave them the law on Mount Sinai when they was with Jesus, I mean with Moses. So they were already there doing what they always did this time of the year. They were there 
doing what their tradition held, doing what they had done their whole lives. And God was about to show up. He was going to show up. He was already there, but he was about to do something different with something they've always done. So my question this morning is, what does God want to do differently with what you've always done? What does God want to do with your Monday tomorrow, your Monday morning, that you do every Monday morning? Maybe it's even every Monday morning in summer. Okay, I'll even give you that. But what does God want to do differently? How are you inviting God to show up in a different way in what you've already done? How about this morning? We'll take this morning. We won't even go to Monday. We'll go Sunday morning. How are you inviting God to show up differently right here? And it's great. It's nothing wrong with it. But how have we invited God to show up and do something different in what we've always done? What we've always done in worship. Like I said, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Or what we've always done in Sunday school. Sunday school teachers, talking to myself because I am one. How have you invited God this morning to say, God, my Sunday school class is yours? You know, I have this plan, but God, you can take my ordinary plan, the tradition plan, and it's good. Or at least I think it's good. God, don't tell anybody else differently. But how, how can you use it? How can you bring about something new? And God, give us the strength to follow you in that. Because this is what's happening. They're all there celebrating a feast that they do, a worship service they do every year. They're coming to give thanks to God for their gifts. And what happens is, God decides to gift them back. And what God gifts them with is the Holy Spirit. What God gifts them with is the power to go and not only be, experience salvation, but to go and spread the good news. To go and tell the world the good news that there is salvation and it's found in Jesus. And we call that the day the church was born. Did you know the church wasn't born in a building? And did you also notice, this is interesting, what do we often call the church? The body of Christ. I guess I kind of told a story that I wasn't going to ask y'all anything else. We call the church the body of Christ. How is the church born? When the Holy Spirit comes up on flesh. The Holy Spirit is poured out upon human flesh. How is Jesus born? What does scripture tell us? The angel tells Mary that the Holy Spirit, whose flesh, the Holy Spirit would come up on you and you will give birth to a son. Do y'all see where I'm going with this? The church birth and Christ's birth are very similar. That's why we're known as the body of Christ. And that's what we have to get is that we are the body of Christ. We're not a building. And I think we got that. I think we have that we are not a building. And we have that we are people. But we've got to move beyond that. The church is people to the church is the body of Christ. Because what happens when the church, when we stop at just people? When the church becomes just people... Then we get hung up on silly stuff like, well, I like blue carpet. I like green. We get hung up on, well, I think we should have, I think we can spray people with a, a water sprayer to baptize them. Well, I think they've got to go full under and we've got to hold them down for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. But do you get my point? If people, we bring in our peopleness. So if we stop at the church as just people, we're stuck in our peopleness. And we all have our peopleness. And we all have our things that we get angry at. And it's like I tell people sometimes, because I'm about to use this excuse, I'm just human too. Right now, I just don't want to listen to Jesus. 
we get that way and we get stuck there. But when we start seeing that as a church we were birthed to be the body of Christ, that we born of flesh and the Spirit, much like Christ, who was, then that, when we live into that, it really doesn't become about us. As when we get together, we're not people who, who are the church. We're the body of Christ. So our thoughts are more like, what will Christ want us to do? What does Christ, and does that, do we disagree about that? Yes, but we're all singly focused on the mission of God, which is bringing salvation to this world. So what is birth is the body of Christ, a.k.a. the church. And they're given, if you notice in the scripture, what happens when the Holy Spirit comes? Not only they get loud, they get very, very loud. I mean, that's what they describe it as a loud. They are so loud that the crowds outside think they are drunk, that they've had too much wine. Because Peter has to tell them, we're not full of you. Why is it only 9 o'clock? What kind of heathens do you think we are? But they are so loud that the world has to take notice. Church, are we loud? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I, I can just imagine. All right. <laughs> are, are we loud enough? No. No, that's right. <laughs> We're not. Because we should be louder than any noise this world is throwing out at people, to the hurting people. To hurting people, they're, getting, they're either getting the message. Right now, I think it's fair to say the world's given two different messages to hurting people in this world. People who are lost, people who do not know Jesus as their Savior, do not know the salvation. They don't even know the first part much less the second part. There is two messages that are screaming loud at them. One the message is, you know, you're okay, you're okay, just accept the fact, and you're okay. The other side of the message that's screaming loud is, you're not good enough, fix yourself, then come. Do y'all get, y'all hear those messages? You, do you hear those messages? Yeah, do you hear it's either? You do you, or you're not good enough, so we're not you. Those are the two messages that are the loudest. And this church is unique. Because this church strives to know Jesus. And we can get loud and say, there's a different way. There's the Jesus way. The way where a bunch of people who God's put together in one building, who get together who have fun together, seek together, oh, the will of Christ, and then try to follow it together. You see, we need to be loud. And yes, we need to be loud and have fun and worship God, absolutely. But we also need to get louder outside these doors and louder about the message that Jesus Christ brings salvation to a hurting and sinful, broken world. That's the message that you and I need to be the loudest about is that Jesus Christ heals, forgives, and also empowers and equips to live the life he's called you. So we need to think about the message we send, not only in worship, but when we make decisions, what message are we screaming? When we go out in the community and serve, what message are we screaming? We are called to be loud for Christ. We're not whispering. And we're also even called maybe to even be a little ridiculous for Christ. Well, it would only look ridiculous to those who don't know Christ. But to those who know Christ, ideally I think it would make them want to come and join and say be part of that kingdom. So the Holy Spirit 
Birth the church to be the body of Christ. We're birth similar to Christ. We are called to be loud. And we're also called to use that gift to help others. The Holy Spirit isn't for you. And you may say, wait a minute, Pastor Leah, don't you preach a lot of times that the Holy Spirit works in our lives and our hearts to help us transform, to be like Christ, to get rid of our bad habits and hang-ups and junk. And I do, but that ultimately isn't for you. That's ultimately for you to be a witness and be loud in the world. You see, the Holy Spirit is working in you to reach others and equipping you to reach others. That's why he did the first day of Pentecost when the church was birthed, the body of Christ was birthed, and equipped to reach everyone in Jerusalem. It wasn't just a cool trick of, hey, well, it's just I, I can barely speak English, but now I can speak this new language. No. It was purposeful. It was to share the message, the good news, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he has defeated and conquered sin, hell, death, and the grave. And he didn't just do it for you. He did it for the entire world. And he equipped so that others could hear it. And others did. We're told at the end of this chapter, 3,000 responded that day. You know, the kingdom of God is big. There's others. Actually, Jesus wants the entire world. But I want you to notice, too, in that group of people, they were people of all different nationalities. And yes, and they were Jewish, but you had to know that they disagreed on some things. Again, like I said, one probably said red, the other said blue. But the point is, they were all came together because their lives in Christ were changed, and they had a common mission of sharing Jesus Christ with the world. John Wesley, the founder of the Wesleyan movement, said often when he was asked about people who don't necessarily agree with him completely theologically, he would say to them, if my heart, if your heart is as of my heart, meaning if in your heart is Jesus and right now your mission is to share the love of Jesus with somebody, take my hand and let us walk together. It's a really, it's a paraphrase, but that's what he meant. See, the equipping of the Holy Spirit overcomes any barriers. Equips us to share the good news. Why do we share the good news? For the kingdom of God. Because Pentecost is the day that we became realized that heaven was coming to earth. Not the other way around. You should have Genesis 11. Listen, in Genesis 11, it says, All people on the earth had one language and the same words. When they traveled east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them hard. They used bricks for stones and asphalt for mortar. They said, Come, let's build for ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. Let's make a name for ourselves so that we won't be dispersed all over the earth. Then the Lord came down. That's my favorite line in this verse. Then the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the humans built. And the Lord said, There is now one people and they all have one language. This is what they have begun to do. And now all that they plan to do will be possible for them. Come, let's go down and mix up their language there so they won't understand each other's language. Then the Lord dispersed them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. So what happened here is that humanity was trying to build a tower to get to heaven. Basically. And the greatest line, God came down. Their tower wasn't very big. But I can imagine the conversations. Hey, look how big that tower's getting. God still came down. Remember that. When you start thinking you're building something, God still has to come down to see it. So they're building a tower to try to get to heaven. God comes down and says, this isn't the way. So he, his story tells, he gives them all different languages so that they can't work together. 
But what happens at Pentecost is human beings become equipped not to build a tower to heaven, but to bring heaven to earth, to bring the kingdom of God to earth, to be kingdom builders. That is the reason the church is born, to be the body of Christ and to build God's kingdom and be about his mission. And one last thing about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. You get Peter. Peter who has denied Christ. Peter who has run away in fear. Peter who has been rebuked by Jesus a lot of times. But you have Peter stand up and he preaches. And he preaches the gospel, the good news, the message of Jesus Christ. And he does it because he's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Peter couldn't do it on his own. He even doubted that Jesus was resurrected when Mary came and told him. So that means for any of you here today, any of you here today that's believed the lies that you've gone too far, believes the lies that, well, I can't, I can't be used by Jesus because of what I've done. That's a lie. Or I can't speak. That's not who I am. I don't, I'm not comfortable telling somebody about Jesus. You're still not off the hook. Because the Holy Spirit equips you. The Holy Spirit says, God still thinks that God still calls you His. You are made in His image and He's not given up on you. Whatever the loudness of the world has told you, the Holy Spirit is louder in our lives if we learn to slow down and listen. So none of us here have an excuse. We're all called and equipped to, lit, to witness, to speak. You might even be called to do the opening prayer. But the point is, there's no such thing as telling God you can't do it. There's no going to God and saying, God, I can't do this. God, I can't be your witness. God, I can't pray out loud. God, I can't tell somebody about Scripture. God says, I've given you everything you need. If you believe in Jesus, if you've given your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you. If you have not given your life to Jesus and you feel the Spirit moving in you today, I invite you to come forward our last song and not give a care about what anybody else in this room thinks. Because if anybody else in this room does anything besides rejoice at the work of Jesus in your life, well... It just won't be good. But if you're struggling today, and you're like, I, I know, Pastor Leah, I believe what you say about the Holy Spirit, but I just don't feel it. Then I invite you to come forward. I'm not even going to give you the option of meet me in the corner. You can later, and that's fine. But, but come forward and let this church pray over you. Let this church lay hands on you. Let these people, this body of Christ that has the Holy Spirit in them, let them lift you up and intercede for you. If you know Jesus, but you are having a really tough season in your life, come forward. Let us pray with you. You know, we, we say, come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says, come. I came. Now you go. That's our charge. Maybe we need a big banner that just says go. Because the Holy Spirit's here. We are the body of Christ, birth by flesh, but also by the Holy Spirit. We are equipped to bring God's kingdom here on earth. And it starts today. Let us pray. 
Gracious, loving God, Lord, forgive us when we get so wrapped up in ourselves, when we forget what's most important, and that is you and the message of your good news. God, forgive us when we believe lies, lies that were not worth loving, lies that were not good enough, lies that will never make it. God, those are lies the world tells us. But Lord, let your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts to tell us the truth. The truth is that we are so loved by you. And not only you love us so much that you save us, that you empower us, you equip us to tell others to bring about your kingdom. God, that is your Holy Spirit in the midst of us. God, for those who are hurting, yeah, I do pray you put on their heart, let the church pray for them. But if not, God, may they know that this is just a season. That this isn't, it doesn't define them. It's not even going to be the rest of their lives. It's just a season. And God, that you are walking with them. Lord, if anyone has not accepted Christ into their hearts, I pray that you open their hearts. And I pray that they let Christ come running in because that's what you've been doing, God. You've been knocking, just waiting for them to open their hearts and let you in. So God, let that be the day. And God, let it be for us that it's Pentecost every day, that we feel your equipping and your empowering us. And God, surprise us. Surprise us in this moment and in the next. It's not ours control. For we follow you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Now go in the power of the Holy Spirit and tell the world that Jesus has come and through him there is hope, salvation, and life. Take the love of God with you.